Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? I recently pulled my original iPod out of storage and it got me wondering, is it still possible to get this to work with that? The iPod was launched in 2001 and almost immediately revolutionized the way a lot of people listen to music. I remember when I first saw one of these and thinking just how amazing it was at the small size of it, yet how much music could be stored on here. This very first generation came with an internal 5 gigabyte hard drive. Today that seems like nothing but considered that other MP3 players available at the time used flash storage and those were measured in the megabytes, not gigabytes. So the whole ad tagline of a thousand songs in your pocket was really a big deal back then. Now, Apple has this tendency to cut off older technology when it sees fit. It's not just afraid of cutting entire product lines. For example, the iPod lineup was more or less discontinued around 2017. The only item still left that's labeled an iPod that Apple sells is the iPod Touch. And even that doesn't really have a whole lot of resemblance to these. The iPod Touch is more or less just an iPhone without the phone. But in other ways, Apple also likes to cut off older technology, such as the Mac OS. It really only supports machines that are up to about eight years old if you want to run the latest version. Any older than that, and you're kind of on your own. So considering that these very first generation iPods are approaching 20 years old, I'm kind of wondering, is there even still support for these with modern Macs? So let's find out. Now there are actually two potential problems we could face when trying to get this thing working. The first one is hardware. The first and second generation iPods only connected through a Firewire interface. USB was a thing back then, but it was still kind of in its infancy. USB 2.0 wouldn't be a thing for yet another couple of years, so you were stuck to relatively slow USB 1.1 speeds, about 12 megabits per second, which meant that it would have taken forever to fill the five gigabyte hard drive on an iPod like this. Also, there were power limits in terms of delivery over early USB interfaces, so similarly, it would have taken forever to charge one of these through USB. So instead, Apple went with Firewire, which was an interface that it helped develop, and it made a lot of sense because that interface took care of both of those issues. You could get up to 400 megabit per second in terms of bandwidth, and it also supplied a lot more current for charging the iPod. It was also a pretty easy decision for Apple to make, not just because it was its pretty much own interface, but also because at that point, Apple was including Firewire ports on all of its Macs. So it meant your iPod would already connect to your Mac if you owned a modern one with really nothing other than the right cable and some software. These days, of course, that's a bit of a problem because, well, Firewire had its niche in the consumer sphere, but it never really took off. And even Apple, after a number of years, finally dropped the interface from its computers. Modern Macs haven't included Firewire for several years now. So how am I gonna hook this thing up to that? Well, we've got some adaption that I think will work. The first one is this. This is an adapter that'll go from Thunderbolt 3 using a USB Type-C port to Thunderbolt 2, which uses a mini DisplayPort type connector. Into that, we can then connect a Thunderbolt 2 to Firewire 800 interface. Now, Firewire 800, as its name suggests, was twice as fast as the original Firewire, which was 400 megabit, but it also used a different connector than what's on these iPods. So we need yet another adapter to go from Firewire 800 down to Firewire 400. Now there were Firewire 800 to 400 cables and those two protocols are compatible with each other. It basically just kind of, you know, negotiates down to whatever the lowest common denominator between the two is. So even though I'm using a Firewire 800 adapter, it doesn't mean that suddenly this iPod can go twice as fast. 
but I don't have one of those 800 to 400 cables. I only have a 400 to 400 cable, so we'll try and stick this in there and see if this works as well. Let's get all of this hooked up to the back of the computer, and then we can get on to the second concern that we may have. So I've got that cable adapter mess all hooked up and I've gone ahead and fully charged up the iPod just to be safe using its external AC adapter. I'm not sure that this cabling mess is going to deliver enough current to be able to actually charge one of these if necessary. So to be safe, it's fully charged. I've already got Apple Music launched on my machine here. It's what replaced iTunes in the latest version of Mac OS. And well, let's plug this in and see what we get. I can't imagine that Apple would have included support for the original iPod in later versions of Apple Music. I mean, this thing's almost 20 years old. There's got to be no way. Wait. Wait, what? It sees it. And it can read the music on it? Are you kidding me? Wow. So I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting it to just ignore it. Now, this one's called Dan's iPod because this actually wasn't my very first iPod. I bought this off of a friend of mine named Dan uh, about 10 years ago when I started kind of getting into retro computing in earnest. I had always wanted an original iPod. The very first one that I owned was a third gen, which I also still really like. Unfortunately, I sold it a number of years ago and clearly he didn't wipe it before he gave it to me. So this is kind of a time capsule of music from like the early 2000s. I don't know until when he was using this iPod, but like it still works. The hard drive spins up, can read data, but I'm just so surprised that Apple Music can talk with this thing. That's, that's crazy. I mean, you know, maybe Apple didn't bother to strip out the old code to talk to these old iPods. Maybe there's still like one person there in Cupertino who's like, no, we have to keep support for these because they're like the iPod diehard person. I don't, I don't know. I can't explain why this still works, why Apple is willing to cut off support for much newer products, yet keep supporting for something that's this old. But hey, I'll take it. Now, this makes me really curious because, okay, it's one thing to have an Apple iPod talk with an Apple Mac through Apple adapters, but not long after the iPod was initially released, Apple got really smart and came out with a version for Windows. I wonder if iTunes for Windows can still talk to this and also if that crazy adapter mess will work on a regular PC. So let's find out. Okay, so I've got my ThinkPad. Let's get this thing fired up and we'll grab the adapters while we're at it here. Now, this one, I'm a little more concerned about the hardware part of it working than the software. The software part, let, let's, let's just say this iTunes for Windows is kind of ancient and a lot of people hate it. And while Apple has put some effort into trying to make, you know, Apple Music and Photos and all the stuff that used to be built into iTunes on the Mac a lot better, they haven't really been putting much, if any, effort into the version for Windows. So we may actually have better likelihood from a software perspective of getting this old iPod to work on a PC. But the hardware thing is where I'm, I've got my doubts. So I'm going to use the same adapter as before, the uh, Apple Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 2 adapter. My ThinkPad here does have Thunderbolt built in, which is much more common than Firewire was on PC hardware back in the day. Now, these days, getting Firewire on a laptop is a lot more difficult simply because, well, you know, PCMCIA, PC card, Express card, 
the expansion interfaces that you had back then to possibly add a Firewire card to a laptop, those really don't exist now. So there aren't very many Thunderbolt to Firewire adapters that are certified for the PC. Apparently it's kind of hit or miss with these Apple adapters. So I guess we'll just try it and see what we get. I'm gonna plug them in one at a time in case Windows has drivers it needs to install related to these. I don't want to throw at all of these adapters in one shot and maybe it gets confused or whatever. Uh, there's a Thunderbolt 3 control panel. Oh, no way! Is not certified for PC use. Well, no, duh, it's an Apple adapter, but but it sees it. The PC sees it. All right, let's um, let's go for it, huh? Let's see what we get. The hard drive is spinning up. Oh, what? So it's acting like it's connected, but it's not showing up in iTunes. Hold up, I've got an idea here. I was poking around in this Thunderbolt devices control panel again, and I noticed that it says here connection status not connected to this Firewire adapter. If I tap it, it brings up a UAC prompt. Yes. Aha. Always connect. Let's try plugging this in again. Is this showing up in Windows Explorer now? It's showing up in Windows Explorer! Now, Apple would never like let you access the actual music files directly on the iPod. For like copyright reasons, you had to use iTunes, and there were all sorts of limitations as to how you can copy music to the iPod and from where, and you can never copy music back off of it, that sort of thing. But you could also use these effectively as external FireWire hard drives and use basically the the extra space that you'd have left on the hard drive inside the iPod, you know, that wasn't being used up by music. So under Windows 10, this crazy adapter mess can still talk to an iPod, but it's not showing up in iTunes. Let's try relaunching iTunes. Does it show up now? It's still not showing up. That's really interesting. I wonder if Apple didn't pull support for really old iPods like this from iTunes for Windows. That's the only explanation I have. I mean, the computer can talk to the iPod clearly because it's showing up in Windows Explorer, but it's not mounting in iTunes. But I know for sure that this iPod was formatted for Windows. You can go into the settings and it'll tell you that. So. That's not the factor here. That's really interesting. So yeah, those results are pretty much the opposite of what I expected. I, I don't know what to think of this now. The fact that a modern Mac running a modern operating system through this crazy adapter setup will still work with an original iPod that's almost 20 years old and yet a PC using that same adapter setup can talk to the iPod, but iTunes itself seems to be the limiting factor. Now, there may be more to that story. It may be something specific to like this first gen iPod. Maybe later models will work with it just fine. I'm not sure. Maybe it is some bizarre interaction with this crazy adapter setup and Windows 10 and drivers and, and who knows. All I know is that the answer is at least kind of a yes. You can still use old iPods on modern computers. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are sitting there thinking, well, why, what's the point? Why not just use your phone? Get it the modern era, stop using this old antiquated garbage. And clearly the majority of people have done that. Yet there are still some people who actually like to use these dedicated music devices, if not old school iPods. There is a subculture of people who take older iPods and try to upgrade them and enhance them as best they can. There are mods where you can put larger batteries in these, take the original mechanical hard drive out and replace it with flash storage, software upgrades, all sorts of crazy stuff. That's 
a rabbit hole I haven't really gone down, nor do I really have the time or inclination to do so, but there are people out there who do that. But even larger than that group is a set of people who just like to have a dedicated device for storing their music. Maybe their phone doesn't have as much capacity as they want, or they don't like having the distraction of their phone, or maybe they feel like the hardware in the phone isn't that great for music playback. In fact, Sony, of all companies, even though they've largely cut out big swaths of their consumer electronics business, still manufactures solid state digital audio playing Walkman devices, some of which are very expensive and capable of playing high res audio files. So there's clearly a market still there and at least some interest from people to want to do this. Granted, yeah, it's not very many, but in the very least, in the relatively short term, if this is something that you've wanted to get back into or recently find yours sitting in a storage bin like I did with mine, you can at least try to get it working again. Anyway, if you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.